In this video, we will look at lead code problem four, um, the median of two sorted arrays. So in this problem, we are given two sorted arrays, nums one and nums two. Um, they are both sorted in an ascending order. And the goal is to merge them into one array, like we have here, and then find the median. And the median will be the middle element in this sorted sequence. So we have three elements here. The second element will be our median, which is two. If we have an even number of elements in the sorted array, in the merged array, um, we'll find the average of these two middle elements. So 2 plus 3 divided by 2 is 2.5. Now notice that nums1 and nums2 arrays are integer arrays. So when you calculate the um, average here, you need to make sure that you are doing a floating point division, not an integer division. So I'll be using a simple merge algorithm here where I start looking at the first element of each array. Um, so I'll start by creating a new array with the size, which is the merged size, the number of elements we have in both arrays. So if I have four ar elements in the first array and four elements in the second array, my um, output array or the result array will have eight elements. I will then look at the first element in both sequences at location zero in the first sequence and at location zero in the second sequence, compare them, and the smallest element will be moved to the output array. So here I have one is less than two, so one will be sent to the destination array. Now, only the pointer or the index of the first sequence will be moved to the next element because number two was not selected, we will keep this for the next comparison. So the first array, we are looking at the second element here, which is the value seven, and we are going to compare it with the still first element in the second array, which is two. 2 is less than 7, so we'll be moving 2 there, and then we are only moving the index of the second array. So now we are at location 1 and location 1 in both arrays. So 7 compared to 3, we'll place 3 in there, move the reference for the second array. 7 is less than 9, so we move the index for the first array. 9 is less than 10, so we take 9, and then we move the index of the second array. And then we have 10 less than 12, so we take it and move the index of the first array, and then we compare 11 with 12, 11 is less than 12, so we move 11 to the destination, and we are done with this array. Now, you will be done with one array before the other, so what you will need to do next is to go through the elements left in the remaining array, all these elements, so while we have still elements in this array, we'll move them into our destination array. So let's try writing the code for this. The first step is to create the new array, which is the one that will have all the elements merged into one single array. So I'll start by creating an integer for the size of that array, which will be the first array nums one dot length plus nums two dot length. And then I'll create my um, output array. Let's create it here as an integer array. Let's call it data, for example. And that will be a new integer array with the size that we just calculated. Once I have that, I need to have an index to keep track of the first array elements. So i, let's call it i, is equal to 0. And we need another one to keep track of the second array index, so j equals 0. And then the data array where we are placing the elements, we need to start with 0 and move it every time we add an element. So we start with k equal to zero. So I'll start iterating through the array elements while we have elements in either arrays. So while i is less than nums one dot length and at the same time j is less than nums two dot length. So we have elements in both arrays, we want to make sure that we compare the elements in the reference that we are keeping track of in each array. So I want to check in nums1 at location 0 with nums2 at location 0 when we start. Now, when we move the references, when we move the indices, i will be moved or j will be moved. So this will keep track of what element we'll be comparing in the next iteration. So I will compare nums at location i if it's less than nums at location j, that means we will move the element at location i to the destination array. 
So data at location K, that's the index of the um, data array, will be equal to the smaller value, which is nums at location or nums1 at location i. Now, since we moved the elements or the first element in the um, array 1, that will be the index that we are moving, so i++. plus plus. Otherwise, that means the second array has the smaller element, so we'll move that to the data array at the location k. So nums 2 at location j. And since we moved from nums 2, we'll just increment j by 1. In both cases, we are going to move k to the next location, so we can add in that next location in the destination or the data array. So that will keep going as long as we have elements in both arrays. When we are done with one array, we are left with one, the other array with some elements left in it. So while we have elements in the remaining array, we'll move them to the destination array. So I will need to check for the first array while we have i is less than nums1.length. We will keep going through the elements in that, um, in that array. So data at location k is equals to nums1 at location i, and we move both i and k. So i++ plus plus and k++. Plus plus. The other scenario we would have is we still have elements in the second array instead of the first array, so we'll check j is it less than nums2.length. In that case, we'll move the elements to the data array from that array. So data at k is equal to nums2 at location j, and we increment both j and k. So that will do our merging algorithm. The remaining step is to check if we have in the uh, merged array, if we have an even number of elements or uh, an odd number of elements. To do that, I can compare the size with mod two, so do mod two for the size. If it's equal to zero, that means we have an even number of elements. So in that case, I will return back the two middle elements divided by two. So the data at size divided by two plus the data at size divided by two minus one, so we can put this in parentheses. So that will get me the result of adding these two middle elements, and then we can divide them by two. Again, these are two integer values, so I will divide by 2.0, so this way we ensure we have a floating point value. Otherwise, if we did not return here, we'll just return the middle element, which will be return data at size divided by two. So let's try to run it and see if we missed anything here. I do have a compilation error. Uh, I used semicolons in here instead of commas. And let's try again. And I did not select nums1 and nums2. I put nums instead of nums1 and nums2. So let's run it one more time. And uh, two cases here passed. So let's click on submit. And our solution got accepted and it beats 100% of the other solutions. And for memory, it beats 87% of the other solutions.